I I honestly believe that um, there will be industries that will be disrupted. And and I did a talk um, recently, which um, quoted a bit of Gartner research about the, where they're suggesting that um, by 2030, that 80% of a project manager's role could theoretically be done by an AI augmented um, piece of software. Um, and for project managers, hearing that statistic, they could go, oh, gosh. Hi, this is your Project Management Cowboy coming right back to you with our next podcast. I'm particularly excited about this topic because everybody's talking about it. We are talking today with an expert on AI. We have uh, the special privilege all the way from Brisbane, Dr. Elissa Farrow, who has extensive real life experience with a number of different topics. She'll, she'll give us a little bit of a lead in of all the wonderful things she does. But without further ado, Hi, Alyssa. Welcome on board. I'm so happy that you took time uh, to out of your day. You're you're at a client, so I, I appreciate your 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 commitment uh, to discussing the topic. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here. Great. Um, I, what I what I, a standard question I kind of like to ask a little bit up front um, in case you know because when people look at these things they might ask themselves question how do these people know each other is there some kind of cabal of trainers or consultants that's going on here uh, no not really uh, where did we meet we met in Dubai earlier this year at an international project management conference yeah, yeah exactly uh, you'd been to the to the Dubai conference which is quite an impressive conference a couple times right you were a veteran. Yes, yes. It was my second time uh, there. The first time was my last conference gig just before COVID changed everything uh, in our in our planet. And and this time I got the, the joy of speaking for two days in a masterclass about big data and AI in project management context with about 60 people. It was a really yeah. great time. Um, funny is I I was uh, in impressed with your with your with your background and and with your with your presentation and for the longest time this concept of ai has been bothering me because i think there's a lot of potential behind it but it's been irritating because i just had so many questions about it right so this this idea of doing this podcast has been around for a long time and we kept on saying who do we know who do we know who can talk about about ai like a like a pm cowboy or cowgirl so no nonsense, direct, pragmatic, so that other people understand. In German, we have this wonderful saying, if, if, if you understand something, then you have to be able to explain it to a seven-year-old, a housewife, a houseman, or a board member. Mm -hmm. um, and you have, you have excellent academic pedigree, which we're, we're going to take a look at, what, what your background is. Uh, but I also like the fact that you are no nonsense. You can, you can say things that, so the rest of us can understand it. Mm, thank you. Yeah, it comes <laughs> probably from my original social science background where um, the very beginning sort of first job that I had was actually working in the community sector in domestic and family violence prevention and youth oh, wow. work. So I think okay. to be able to sort of translate concepts into into ways that um, every every person could understand is something that's really important to my social justice principles. So you, you, you have a doctor, you have a PhD, right? Mm, yeah. You want to give us yeah, a little I, bit of uh, of a background of 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 where you come from and and what wealth of yeah. of acad academic knowledge you have? Yeah. Yes. Um. Certainly. Um. I I would call myself a a practical um a practical futurist. Um. I did my uh, doctoral studies, which I concluded last year, uh, looking at uh, organizational futures and uh, the implications of artificial intelligence on on teams, on leaders, on the adaptation approach. Um, that was a, a bit of a passion area of mine because I had for a long time uh, been curious about doing further study. Um, a long time ago, I did a social science bachelor degree at a university here in beautiful, sunny Queensland. And um, that was because I had a strong interest in making change in my local community. Um, and so the social science that I looked at was looking at a blend of psychology and sociology and neuroscience type type topics. And But I crave for more. And so then I did a master's that incorporated some policy uh, and planning dimensions 
And then for quite a number of years, helped organisations set their strategy and then try to adapt to that strategy via portfolios, programs, projects, change and benefits, uh, the, which is how got I got into by that the project world. program portfolio, yes. bug, which, which I think makes you totally interesting that you have a solid, profound background from from another area and and that you that you that you've joined our community, because I think I think this this diverse background adds so many positive facets that are relevant. Uh, you know, project management, as you know, is not just uh, getting things done, but there's a whole bunch yeah. of psychological aspects behind it.